this is the part where I sing. It's been a hard three weeks without you, my friends. Then I tell you all about this bird I see. Okay, okay, can you? It's a joke. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lips Wogun, and if this is your first time of watching any of my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. I am a Nigerian YouTuber living in India and the United Kingdom, and I bring you videos about my lifestyle as an immigrant in England, United Kingdom, um, getting remote jobs, freelancing, and just everything that will make your journey, your immigration journey, smoother. Um, when I was coming here, I watched a lot of immigration videos because I enjoyed them. I genuinely loved them. And um, I hope my videos can educate you and help you hold your hands regarding your immigration journey. Anyway, that's aside. Um, that explanation aside, um, I have not really made a sit down video in almost two months because I've been busy with life, you know. This is quite, we are currently on the summer holiday and this is the time that I have to work and work and work. And work and work and work since school is no longer in session so i've not really had the time to sit down and make a new video but i'm here right now i'm here today and in today's video i am going to be filming a highly requested video which is how to get a care job in the united kingdom i get a penny for every time everyone or people have asked me gibbs i found you on youtube you talked about getting a care job how can i get a care job in the united kingdom I for don't blow by now. I for don't reach by now, okay? Because I get these messages on WhatsApp, on Facebook Messenger, on Instagram, my Instagram DMs, on Twitter. I get these messages back to back. And I have a lot of people asking me how they can get a care job. And when I made the video about me getting a care job, I also mentioned that the care job is like my side hustle. And then that I have a job in a, in a, in a company in a company god 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 <laughs> i have a job in a company where i work as a public relations and communication strategist i work part-time basically because i'm a student and then i do care job for the extra money that it gives me but i've said this thing time and time again and you guys are still asking me how can i get a care job how can i get a care job if you followed my journey from when i was in nigeria to now until now you know that i share a lot especially how you can progress in your career so if you say it's care that you want to do <clears throat> that's fine i'm going to tell you how i got my own care job which is like a side hustle and how you can get yours if it's something that you're interested in because these dms are endless endless so i've done my research i've also decided for my experience together to show you guys how to get a care job and this video is for you if you are coming into the united kingdom maybe in september as an international student planning to come to the united kingdom in january 2023 three as an international student or maybe you're in the united kingdom and you're probably working in a warehouse and all your back is spinning you you and you want to do something not less stressful but something that will not, you know that will not keep you for your time okay and you're looking for a part-time job um this if you're an international student in the uk there are a bunch of jobs that you can actually do but you know that you have to do them part-time because as a student you're not allowed to work full-time you're allowed to work only 20 hours per week see this video here regarding how i pay my school fees or how how to pay your school fees working 20 hours per week so you're allowed to work 20 hours per week nothing more nothing nothing more than that so you have to use your 20 hours per week wisely you don't want to be doing something that like when you go to work or come back the next day you cannot do anything so care which makes care the best option for most international students who, do, who don't have shame i said this time and time again that when you come here this place will teach you how to be humble a lot of people who do like menial jobs here in the United Kingdom are doing well back home. For instance, myself, when I was in Nigeria, I worked as a lead. I was working as a lead before coming here. I was working as a lead strategist in an advertising company in the United States. And I was working as a lead strategist for Nigeria. And I worked on top tech brands. I worked on campaigns for top tech brands and all of that. So coming here and like you know doing care first of all before, before even getting my other part-time job was not like the best transition for me it was not the most seamless transition for me but you know leave your shame in your father's house leave your shame in your motherland and come here and do the job that will help you pay the bills um so let's get to the cocoa of the matter um as an international student here in the united kingdom there are a bunch of jobs that you can do remember you have to work for 20 hours per week and you don't have to go 
above that until maybe during the summer holiday when you're free to work for four months full time um so during um your um, normal school session you need to get a part-time job most um, jobs that are available to students are um warehouse jobs cleaning jobs washing in the kit working in the kitchen as like a as a clean as a dishwasher or somebody that washes plates in the kitchen okay or a cleaner you clean offices or places basically or working in a warehouse emptying you know warehouse stuff or you can also work as a carer for this video i'm not telling you different part-time jobs that you can actually do as an international student in the united kingdom i'm just telling you the opportunities that are available to you and what you can do this does not mean that you cannot get a job in your field because hello i i was fortunate enough to also get a job in my field which is also a part-time job in like a a company where i work i i have ex marketing communication experience so i'm currently working as a public relations and communication strategist with that company so it's really like exciting to get a job in your field but because it's 20 hours I'm we are, in, we are on holiday now i need to work more and that's why i'm doing care so this video is for you i know most of you have seen my video my 5 30 morning routine as a carer in the united kingdom or something and that's why you found me and you said that um, you want to know how to come here as a carer so i'm just going to give you guys the gist on how to come to the united kingdom as a carer i like to explain properly in depth in depth in depth yeah so you guys can like understand like every Thing that i'm saying and when you want to make your plan and your decision you'd have you be armed with the right information to make the right decision okay why a lot of people choose to work in the healthcare sector is the fact that it's very broad there are a bunch of job opportunities and the united kingdom um government um prioritize like um health i guess I, yeah they, they do there are different parts of care that you can work with you can work with the elderly that's old people's home you can work with disabled children you can also work with people that have like mental health issues so it depends on the part of care that you want to go to if you want to do support it's the easiest one i guess but it's quite difficult because for support you're not wiping anybody's behind you're just sitting with them it's going to be like a one-on-one -on -one thing uh, most of these people have like capacity to do stuff themselves you're not wiping their behind you're not giving them a wash you're not dressing them you're not making food for them just sitting with them to make sure that they don't get into any situation or they don't try to like harm themselves so that's what um support is about i guess but the problem with support is that most times it gets very easy you just sit down and all of that but other times when you're you're patient is triggered it's going to be a problem for you because you're going to have like a really stressful day and also if you're someone that does not sleep at night you're going to have a problem with support because you're going to have a problem with um doing mental health support because you have to sit down there for like a long time and you don't have to fall asleep so if you're pressing phone throughout the night i am wondering how you intend to like you know you know to do support it might be almost impossible to get a support like to, to thrive in support because you're not supposed to fall asleep so um, if you know that you don't have a problem falling out you don't have you have a problem staying awake when you're just sitting down doing nothing and just watching one person and you don't have a problem with handling the patients when they get triggered you should definitely go for support but if you know that you, ha you have a problem with um falling asleep anywhere like me i can sleep inside the club i can fall asleep anywhere i like sleeping like i enjoy sleeping so for someone like me i cannot really do full-time support because what is sitting down with somebody morning to night 12 hours it's nah i can't do it okay i do care because okay you walk around you wipe behind you know you give food you do the dishes there are a bunch of stuff that you do you go around okay you don't have to sit at a particular place for a long time okay so um that's for support there's also uh, working with disabled people disabled children i've worked in a down syndrome home and you it's um, it's a combination of care and support because you um you know get them out of bed like give them a wash in the uk like taking having a shower and having a wash is not the same thing even having a bath having a shower and a wash is not the same thing but we'll probably get into that in another video or let me just say it here anyway giving them a wash which is what most people like is like you know you put a um a flannel which is a a towel a flannel into like the wash basin like put a little bit of soap and just like wash them you're not rinsing their body just washing them and then you dry them up with a towel then shower is you know shower shower and then bath is like going to the bathtub and like soaking yourself i hope you guys understand what i'm talking about anyway i'm trying to make this to make sure that this video is not too long and all of that so um 
and for the disabled home and all of that disability and support or care it involves like care which is getting them up in the morning cleaning them giving them a wash bringing them to the lounge and all of that making them food and then you now start the support when once they are done bringing them you now sit down with them so for that one you might not feel as sleepy because you might also take them to the park or you might just take them to it, it depends but you might not feel as sleepy unlike support that you don't have to give them a shower or a wash or give them food you just have to sit down with them throughout the day then for the main care here you're working with old people and you are definitely going to be wiping their behind you're going to be turning them you're going to be wiping their behind you're going to be giving them a wash in bed for some you're going to go to uh, take them to the shower or to the bathroom and you're going to use the hoist all this plenty of equipment and all of that that's in the main care and all of that um why people focus on most care jobs is because um you're looking to relocate abroad it's also the best way to get sponsored and if you're a, an international student you're looking for how to stay back in the united kingdom after your studies a care job might be might be a good option for you if that's what you want to do with your life and all of that it might be a good option for you to get sponsored by like a care job and all of that so that's why most people are actually looking for a care job um yeah so now i've explained everything about care like let's go to now let's now go to the other cook of the matter how can you get a care job maybe first thing you need to do is to take training online certifications very important like whether you've had care experience or not for most um, care employers they don't actually care for me i've not cared for anybody before like even to care for myself the problem okay but when i came here i actually did a couple of trainings i took i did some online certifications i also did um shadow doing which means that you would like for two days you'd go to work with carers and just look at how they are getting the job done how they're getting people up in the morning how they're using the equipment because you know having this online certification is not the same thing as having um practice um, having um practical experience in the field do you understand so you learn faster when you when you're shadowing down the online you know certification but you also need to Get the, get, getting the online certification is the first step. I have a degree in English and Literary Studies. I am currently studying for a Master's in Management with Digital Marketing and nothing that I have done, nothing is related to care. My job, my other job in public relations, of course, it aligns with my, my previous experience and all of that and what I'm currently studying. But care does not align at all. I'm working in care because I did the certification and I did this whole shadowing thing. So the first step to start is to make sure you get your online certification. Places that you can actually get this from there's flex b uk there's also florence so you can take some of these courses on manual handling um first aid just like a bunch of stuff that you need to know manual handling i think it has to do with um like getting them up maybe with the equipment and all of that so you just need to take the certification the second one is to get your dbs so dbs is something that has to do with um your security checks so they don't want um they, they need to be sure that you are clear and you're not like a criminal or something like that your criminal record checks out and um, properly before you get employed in any care sector so before the next step after um doing your certifications your online certifications is to make sure that you do your dbs i think that costs 60 pounds or something like that that costs six, that cost me um, 50 some 50 something pounds but for some people 60 pounds but it cost me 50 something pounds so that's the next step that you have you don't even have to get an employer before you get your dbs because um for the for the um for the other for the agency that i'm currently working at um she just asked me do you have your dbs and i said yes i love that i was like okay and that day i started working because i had done my certifications i i had gathered some experience and i also have had my um my dbs okay so you also need to get your dbs make sure that your security clearance checks out and if you're in the uk the third step is to start applying for jobs like the best way to get jobs is word of mouth i'm telling you word of mouth has helped me in this my care journey all the care jobs that i have done in this country it's word of mouth all the ones that i've applied for I'm like pfft, oh like so if you're abroad like you should rely definitely on applying online because a bunch of people that have come here as senior carers as carers they got their jobs by applying online so if you're abroad you should apply online but if you're in the uk and you know anybody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows someone working in the care home please ask the person for help because i know most times when i'm working um in some of the care homes i miss people and, I'm, and when they complain about their agency i'm like oh we always get jobs in my agency i'll just give them my my boss's number and i'm like call her or email her and find what's happening they're working with the agency you know 
So word of mouth has come in very handy regarding like getting a care job here in the United Kingdom and all of that. But if you're abroad, once you're done with this one, I, I don't know. I think you're supposed to write your IELTS or something like that. I think you should write your IELTS because I know I was talking to someone on Telegram sometime um, in January and he wanted to get a job as a carer and he was ready for his IELTS. So I think you need to write your IELTS. I don't know if it's compulsory. Just correct me in the comment section if you think it's not like worth it. But I think you should write your IELTS. If you're abroad, do the certifications, these online certifications, write your IELTS and all of that. And once you're done writing your IELTS, make sure you get up to band 7, okay? You're not doing express entry that you need to get band 8, 8.5, or get a very high score. Just, up, just try to get band 7 in everything and you'll be fine. The fourth step that I would advise you to take, especially when you are abroad and you want to work as a carer here in the United Kingdom, is to make sure that you start volunteering, start graduate experience. Um, and you know the funny part? Anything is experience. If you've cared for your grandmother, you know, your sick grandmother, you can add that as your care experience. Or maybe look for a hospital that caters to the elderly and just volunteer. Just volunteer. Be a volunteer dear. Just maybe three hours in a week, four hours. Just like find time to get this experience. Like even though it's paid, it, volunteering is unpaid. Just like you know what you're pursuing. Just try to do it. Just try to gather this hands on experience in hospitals that cater for the elderly. Or just try to get volunteering experience in caring for people. Try to go to hospitals and ask them how you can help them. Do you understand how to volunteer? What uh, what part of your service that they that they actually require? Do you understand? Do they require what part of your service do, do they require? And all of that. So just volunteer. And once you're done with your volunteering, you've gathered the experience that you need, you've written your IELTS, you've gotten a good grade, you've done the trainings on maybe Flexby UK or on um, Florence or on any other um, any other reasonable um, online certification website, you can now start applying on, for jobs. I would advise you to apply on Indeed. Um, on Indeed. I don't know about Glassdoor for care jobs, but I'm sure of Indeed. You can apply on Indeed, like write a fire cover letter. If you cannot write cover letter, reach out to me. I will help you and write fire cover letter, okay? I'll be right up. I hope you write fire cover letter. But write a fire cover letter that will make them like reach out to you by fire, by force, by thunder, by lightning. Anyhow, they have to reach out to you by force, okay? So write a fire cover letter. Try to tweak your cover letter before you apply for any job with any care home or agency or I'm not, with any care home or any agency. I don't know if most agencies sponsor, but with any care home that sponsors, make sure you read about the company properly and just try to just try to personalize this cover letter, personalize your experience so that these people know that you know your audience. And aside from applying for and care jobs on indeed you can also like if you have friends in the uk that are working in care if they if the agency is sponsoring people abroad or you know people abroad that have moved to the uk as a carer you know i moved here as a student okay so if you know people abroad that have moved to the uk as a carer you can reach out to them and be like i find any agency that is sponsoring follow them most of them post and then they'll share you they'll share this um, stuff with you and then you can just start reaching out to them please always write a fire cover letter make sure you have that care experience on your if you go to hospitals and start volunteering now make sure you do those trainings that have to do with care all of them make sure you also like just get the experience write your aisles get up to seven and just like you know put in the work if you're here in the uk you know recommendation is very important to so make sure that you have people that can like put in a good word for you maybe in an agency or in a care home and all of that make sure you also do your dbs make sure you also do the training you know just you know so that's it. It's not rocket science, okay? I've gotten these questions a whole lot, and I hope this video will help you, like, you know, navigate your care journey and all of that. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram as I am Gift Wobble. Okay? Um, till I come your way again next time, be good, be nice to your neighbors, and I hope to see you in the UK. I hope. I hope to see you here in the UK, okay? I think the next video I will do will be about like maybe working in a care home or working in a, working with a care home or working with an agency. Working with a care home as a permanent staff or working with um an agency. Which one do you prefer? Or if you want me to do any a video about I've talked about how I got my other job, my non-survival job. Here I'm going to put it here. 
and in the description box so you can check that out in case you're not interested in care okay thank you so much guys for coming and remember that it's not only care that sponsor people's visa or if you work in tech there are a lot of industries finance a bunch of stuff a bunch of companies actually sponsor it doesn't have to be care so if care is not your passion and all of that I mean, it's a part-time job for me okay it's just a part-time job it's a part-time job for me okay so if it's if if it's your passion you have passion in caring for people definitely like watch this video till the end i'll try to do more research i mean bring some people here who have who are sponsored so that they can just talk to you guys about everything thank you guys for watching bye